Yeah. All right. Happy Friday, Rumble Verse. I hope everyone had a great week. Welcome to Talk Nerdy to Me. I'm your host, Voss. Thank you for joining me once again. I uh, can't believe it. We're almost up to 1,000 subscribers. It's awesome. Uh, thanks for all the support. I love all the comments. Keep it coming. Uh, if you like this content, also, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss an episode and you stay up to date on the latest cybersecurity news. You can also join me on Locals for exclusive content. I'll also be developing some training on there as well and then just continually adding to it. As always, I'll share the links to these articles in the video description for everyone that is interested. All right, let's get started. Uh, Meta's data scraping. Against the rules, yet impossible to stop. While we enjoy so many free online services like social media, our privacy becomes the price we have to pay. Every one of us has suffered a data breach. You might find that your number, email address, or even password has been leaked at some point. I put a link in the video description to Cyber News' personal data leak checker and password leak checker for everyone that wants to see if their email, phone, or, or passwords are compromised. Uh, in some cases, leaks occur due to a cyber attack, malicious insider, or simply unintentional loss or exposure of data. However, threat actors don't always have to penetrate the company's network to obtain our sensitive details. Just last week, Facebook, long criticized for trading users' data, they were fined 265 million euros by Ireland's data privacy regulator, uh, regulator over a leak that exposed over 533 million Facebook user accounts. Roughly a quarter of the user's phone numbers, names, gender, occupation, email addresses, locations, and even marital statuses are circulating the web for free. Threat actors are no longer even charging for that data. It's out there for anyone to take advantage of. Facebook said it took action against the data scraping, but is that enough? GDPR violations. Ireland launched an inquiry last year after a massive data set scrape from Facebook was made available online. Ireland's privacy watchdog, which consulted all the data protection supervisory authorities within the EU before the decision, they said that Facebook violated the GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation. Uh, the aforementioned rules discussed the, ne the necessity of data minimization to protect data and ensure personal data are not made accessible without the individual's intervention. Scraping is precisely that, someone harvesting data available about us online from our usernames to emails and phone numbers to any other data that can be obtained from publicly available sources. This is the second such find for Meta in merely a couple of months. In September, Ireland had already fined Meta on Instagram 405 million euros after examining the public disclosure of children's emails and phone numbers. As scraping continues to be an internet-wide challenge, Facebook opened up two new research areas for its bug bounty community and now rewards scraping bugs submitted by its Gold Plus Hacker Plus researchers. Meta also says it rewards reports of unprotected or openly public data sets containing at least 100,000 unique Facebook user records that include information such as email, phone number, physical address, and religious or political affiliations. In July, Meta filed separate actions in federal court against a U.S. subsidiary of a Chinese na uh, national high-tech enterprise, Octopus, and Ekram Atesh for scraping data from Facebook and Instagram. The company accused Octopus, a U.S. subsidiary of a Chinese national high-tech enterprise, of building a cloud-based platform to provide paying customers access to on-demand scraping software and services. A Turkey-based defendant, Ekrem Atesh, is being sued for allegedly using automated Instagram accounts to scrape data from the profiles of over 350,000 Instagram users. Less is known about WhatsApp, Meta-owned end-to-end encryption messenger service, and scraping protection. Officially, scraping violates its terms of service. However, WhatsApp hasn't issued an official comment following reports about an alleged massive data leak, leaving us wondering whether such a data set of user phone numbers could be obtained by scraping. While companies may have terms that forbid it, they really need the technical controls in place to help prevent it. Any data that is accessible can be scraped. So a little bit more, just what does data scraping mean? We kind of touched on it, but it's commonly defined as a system where a technology extracts data from a particular code set or program. So data scraping provides results for a variety of, use, of uses and automates aspects of data aggregation. There are many ways that businesses use the data scraping to their advantage. Uh, in almost any case where there is large 
body of info, data scraping can function as a way to collect this data and get it into useful formats. For instance, in a variant of data scraping called like web scraping, a company may take an enormous volume of information from a document or file and format it into Excel spreadsheet for later use. Like, for example, like a real estate listing on a website. Real estate company could scrape the data from the web, get it into useful format for outreach and, or classification purposes. So that's the intent of it, but anyways, the threat actors use it. So the fact that companies don't allow scraping does not deter bad actors from abusing the application's native application programming interface, or API. We see this across multiple social media and communication services, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Reddit, etc., where it violates their respective terms of service, but when it comes to abusing APIs, especially surrounding mobile apps, it's problematic. This, there is little to no care to focus to implement such defenses. So stopping unwanted scraping is extremely difficult because you only get a single chance to determine whether a request originates from a human or a bot. There's no time to observe user behavior using machine learning or other means. So scraping bots are very difficult to detect because they look and act just like humans, hiding behind residential proxy networks and leveraging highly customized automation tools it's entirely possible that WhatsApp didn't notice these scraping bot requests. Bots are, in fact, quite hard to stop since requests are not usually coming from the same IP or the same session ID. Scrapers now have the ability to break up the scraping work into chunks and send them in different bots. And I don't mean like one or two either. It's more like thousands to tens of thousands of bots that actively... That activity is just harder to spot. We know this is accurate because security researchers use the same exact technique to scrape threat actor forum and, and channels. So securing WhatsApp, a um, private phone number that belongs to an individual as opposed to government agencies and corporations, uh, that's considered to be personal uh, identifiable information, or PII. Therefore, companies must protect the information you share with them. However, due to some security flaws or simply scraping that some companies turn a blind eye to, your data, like your email address or phone number, can get leaked. Uh, there are a couple of things you can do to make sure that your disclosed information will not benefit threat actors. So, one, do not answer calls and text messages from unknown numbers. Uh, block anyone who raises suspicion. Enable 2FA or multi-factor authentication as soon as possible. Uh, head to WhatsApp settings account and turn the feature on. I'll put this in the description below as well. Uh, check your profile information. Uh, make sure it's not publicly visible. Go to settings, privacy, and choose who can see your profile picture, uh, the about information, and other account details. And make sure you share those only with a small group of people. And don't fall for scam support messages either because scammers, they're, off, they're going to be offering help by redirecting WhatsApp users to experts who allegedly can help get the hacked account back. The only way to recover a hacked account if you are hacked is by contacting the official support for WhatsApp. Uh, Darknet's largest mobile malware marketplace threatens users worldwide. Cybersecurity researchers have shed light on a Darknet marketplace called In The Box that's designed to specifically cater to mobile malware operators. The actor behind the criminal storefront believed to be available since at least January of 2020, has been offering over 400 custom web injects grouped by geography that can be purchased by other adversaries looking to mount attacks of their own. In the box may be called the largest and probably the only one in its marketplace category providing high-quality web injects for popular types of mobile malware. What are web injects? Well, web injects are packages used in financial malware that leverage the adversary in the box attack vector to serve malicious HTML or JavaScript code in the form of overlay screen where victims launch a banking, crypto payments, e-commerce, email, or social media app. These pages typically resemble a legitimate bank login web page and prompt unwitting users to input confidential data such as credentials, payment, credit card info, social security numbers, uh, card verification value, that, that's the CVV on your card. That's then used to compromise the bank account and conduct fraud. In the box is accessible over the Tor anonymity network and advertises a variety of web inject templates for sale with the listing accessible only after a customer is vetted by the administrator in the account. The web injects can be either purchased for 100 a month or as an unlim tier that enables the buyer to generate an unlimited number of injects during the su subscription period. Costs vary between 24 dollars 
dollars and five thousand eight eighty eight, depending on the support charge. So the majority of high demand index is uh, related to payment services, including digital banking and cryptocurrency exchanges. Um, during November twenty twenty two, the actor arranged a significant update to close close to one hundred and forty four index, improving their uh, visual design. The development comes as Cybol disclosed a new malware as a service operation named Duck Logs that's marketed for $69.99 for a lifetime access, giving threat actors the ability to harvest sensitive info, hijack cryptocurrency transactions, and remotely uh, com- commandeer the machines. So what does this mean for you? As you can see, it's not just businesses that are being targeted by threat actors. They are also going after every one of us. Uh, please stay vigilant out there especially during this holiday shopping season because we tend to do a lot of online shopping. Uh, That's it, Rumbleverse. Thank you again for joining me today. Uh, Have a great weekend. Stay safe out there, and uh, we'll see you next time.